Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to today's live webinar, International Expert Roundtable, Digitalization of Invoices and Accounting Process. My name is Justyna Łukasiewicz, and I am the organizer of today's webinar. Mrs. Andrea Morgan is supporting me on the back end as my co-organizer. Before we get started, I want to go over a few points so you know how to best participate in, your, in today's event. In the upper right-hand corner of your own computer desktop, you will see a control panel with three tabs audio, documents, and question chat. Use the orange arrow to expand and collapse your control panel. By default, you will listen in via your computer speaker system. If you prefer to participate via the phone, simply select phone in the audio tab and the dial-in information will be displayed. If you cannot hear us, please select phone in the audio tab and please contact us via the chat window. Furthermore, as a participant, you are automatically muted to avoid background noise. You also have the option to send text questions to today's speakers by typing your questions into the question window, the bottom tab of your control panel. You can send in your questions at any time during the presentation. I will forward them to today's moderator and speaker, Patrick Binkowski. Questions will be addressed at the end of the panel. Any questions that remain unanswered will be followed up afterwards. In addition, you will find a PDF file in the document window in which all countries involved today are presented again with a short profile including their contact information. Please note that this live webinar will be recorded and made available to you afterwards. That concludes all organizational points from my side and I hand over to today's speakers, Patrick Binkowski, Manuel Burati, Imran Farok, Thomas Grime, Justyna Kupczak, and Ferdinand Schlappa. We hope you will enjoy the talk. Digitalization is these days a very modern term. But what does it really mean apart from a definition saying that it is the process of transferring paper documents into its electronic version. How do enterprises really implement digitalization in their business and everyday operations? During today's expert roundtable with speakers from Brazil, Germany, Italy, Poland, and United Arab Emirates, we will present how do we do digitalization in Redland Partner. My name is Patrick Binkowski, and I am Lean and Continuous Improvement Manager in Rudland Partner in Poland. And I have a great pleasure to facilitate the discussion. Many firms have already tried or became <clears throat> digital, but what really pushed them to use digital means of communication and work? Maybe their CEO or maybe a plant manager, or maybe IT director. But I think that the real answer is that COVID pandemic gave us no choice. We either could stop our activities and probably go into a series of troubles, maybe even go bankrupt, or adapt to, our, to, to the situation, to the new situation, equip our employees with laptop, with headsets, and uh, other electronic tools, uh, and do the business as we did before the pandemic hit the world. The very first question I would like to ask uh, our BPO partner from Brazil, uh, Thomas Grime. Hi, Thomas. How are you today? Hi, Patrick. Um, I'm fine, and uh, thank you very much for being able to be here today. Great. I'm also happy that you are with us. And at the very beginning, I would like to ask you to introduce yourself to our audience and uh, specify what is your area of expertise in Redon Partner. Okay. Um, my name is Thomas Grime, and originally I'm actually from Germany, as you might hear by the accent uh, in English. However, I'm already living 11 years in Brazil now. Um, I joined Real and Partner Brazil four years ago, and I'm the responsible partner for our BPO department. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much for that introduction. So let's go to the topic of today's webinar. So how could you uh, maybe could you describe uh, what are the law 
regulations in Brazil regarding e-invoicing and the other sub-question, how does or if the authorities in Brazil deliver one central software for issuing invoices? Okay, yeah. Um, overall, you, you have to know that digitalization of tax obligations specifically is already very advanced in Brazil. Uh, many companies are already working almost paperless and only use data in electronic form. This includes the electronic invoicing. A good example for that are outgoing invoices. The companies submit their invoice information via an interface to the tax authorities. Based on this information, the tax authorities then automatically and usually within seconds issue the official electronic invoice. Uh, this can, for example, be observed if you go to the supermarket. After scanning all products, the cashier then presses the enter button on the cashier and a few moments later, the official invoice issued by the tax authorities is printed out. It already includes all necessary information, such as, for example, the invoice number and even, if you opt for it, your taxpayer ID. Uh, one big benefit of this is that the invoices are all standardized. They all have the same format, so the same information is always located at the same position of the PDF of the invoice. Um, it is also possible to download the invoices in XML, also in Excel format, and that uh, then further facilitates the automatic processing within the accounting. Um, but there's one important observation I would like to make, uh, make uh, related to incoming invoices. Invoices for incoming goods uh, are issued by the tax authority of the responsible state, so they are fairly standardized. However, invoices for services, they are subject to tax on a municipal level, Therefore, as there are thousands of municipalities within Brazil, um, some of them use very different formats. Uh, to make this process easier, a lot of municipalities, they give you the opportunity to download all invoices issued against a certain taxpayer idea electronically, uh, and for that you only need the access as the responsible accountant for the company. Well, that sounds for me that Brazil is really very digital and also I see that our uh, Riddle Partner Office in Brazil is very digital because I see that you are at the moment located in our Riddle Partner Digital Office. That really looks fantastic. And thank you very much for that explanation. How does the uh, also the authorities and the law regulations uh, work in Brazil? Thank you very much. So let's jump right now back to Europe. Uh, and I would like to uh, welcome warmly uh, Manuel Buratti from Italy. Hi, Manuel, how are you? Hi, Patrick. I'm fine, thank you. Thank you very much also for the nice welcome. Thank you very much. Uh, also, uh, I would like to ask you to introduce yourself and your uh, uh, area of expertise in Riddle Partner. Well, I'm a tax consultant and CPA in Italy and joined Riddle and Partner Italy in 2010. And I'm working in the areas tax consulting and BPO at the Bozen office here in South Tyrol, Northern mm -hmm. Italy. Fantastic. And uh, could you also deliver the answer to the question that, the, to the point that we are discussing right now, whether also as in Brazil, uh, a certain regulations already occur in the Italian law? Well, let's say the situation in Italy is quite the same, let's say, as it is in Brazil. So the digitalization process is going on and it is quite advanced, I would say, uh, as electronic invoicing is mandatory for all B2B transactions between VAT subjects that are established, established on uh, Italian territory. And uh, uh, in all the electronic invoices have to be issued in accordance to the uh, official structure provided by the uh, authorities. And after issuing the invoice in the so-called XML format, you have to send it through the official channel provided by the authorities, the so-called SDI channel, uh, through which they, uh, the invoices get first checked uh, uh, for their correctness. And afterwards, they are uh, forwarded to the invoice recipient, which would be the client, obviously. And what we can also see is that um, uh, facing the new situation, uh, accounting systems general, generally in Italy have already adapted to the new situation and therefore they have uh, also API systems connected already to the uh, 
uh, SDI channel in order to handle automatically the electronic invoices. Mm -hmm. That sounds also very technically advanced. And uh, I have also additional question to that. Uh, do you also use the uh, OCR in that in that process? Well, the OCR uh, is not needed itself, as you already have data in a in the uh, way you need it. But obviously, uh, you have the possibility to use OCR in order to uh, extract maybe additional information from PDFs or uh, etc. As as you don't need PDFs or other uh, kind of documents anymore. So you have the let's say the uh, basic uh, XML data where you uh, document where you have all the informations already in and you are able to import automatically through an API system in your uh, accounting system, uh, which is normally already linked to the uh, SDI channel. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, so let's continue our journey uh, in direction East, uh, and we have a fantastic opportunity to greet today uh, Imran Farag. Hi, Imran, how are you? Hi, Patrick. Yeah, very good, thank you. Pleasure to be here today, join colleagues and, and participants alike. So, yeah, thank you. Uh, I'm also happy to see you here. Uh, and I mentioned that we have a fantastic opportunity to have you here. And also, that fantastic opportunity means that we can use it to compare United Kingdom regulation and also United Arab Emirates, um, as you are responsible for those two, uh, for, and you are responsible for operating in those two countries. So, could you also give us uh, a little bit introduction of yourself and how is it linked the UK and UAE in terms of uh, law regulations and um, the software delivered by uh, by each of the country? Yeah, sure. Um, so uh, I'm an associate partner here. Uh, I've been with Rodeland Partner now for 12 years. Um, by qualification, you can say I'm a chartered accountant and a registered auditor. Um, I am the kind of in-country head of the UK office. Um, so I'm responsible for the audit service line, BPO service line, tax service line uh, that we have uh, in the UK office. And then um, as far as the UAE is concerned, I'm responsible for the audit and BPO service lines that we that we have uh, over in the UAE. Um, yeah, you could say it's quite a, an interesting um, dichotomy between uh, UK and UAE uh, and how does this come about? And uh, yeah, for sure, uh, it's a bit of a history lesson as to why um, there's this synergy that exists uh, between the two. Um, so, uh, way back when, uh, the UK um, was a uh, protectorate of the UAE region. They were all separate emirates at the time. And, of course, uh, back in the 60s or 70s, uh, they became a united uh, emirate. Um, so, the, the, the links go back, to, um, uh, go back in history. Uh, but even to this day, the UK and the UAE are very closely aligned, uh, politically, of course, but also economically. Um, and that is where um, we as a UK office have uh, synergies because a lot of laws are, are very similar um, to some courts in the, in the, UK, in the UAE. They adopt uh, English legal uh, rulings, for example. Um, the VAT rules uh, in the UAE are a copy and paste from the UK. So that is where um, the, the two countries are aligned. Thank you very much. I, I really enjoyed that comparison, that comparison, and also these historical aspects of those two countries. It is always uh, good to hear uh, that such cooperation exists, and it works uh, also very well in our Riddle Partner uh, situation world. Uh, all right, so let's continue our journey and return back to Europe and return to Poland. Uh, from Poland is with us Justyna Krupczak. Hi, Justyna. How are you feeling today? Hi, Patrick. I, I'm fine. Thank you. It's nice to see you all. Thanks. OK, so how does the law regulations look, uh, look in Poland and in, in terms of invoicing? And also, uh, do you in Poland, do we in Poland have the central software uh, that we can issue the e-invoices? E uh, 
maybe I first uh, say that I am, I am an accountant uh, from BPO department and I work for, for seven years in Redo Partner. And then answering to your questions, uh, in Poland, uh, Poland, authorities allow, in addition to paper invoices, also electronic invoices. And the uh, lawmakers have made also possibility to send uh, invoices in electric, electronic form. For example, a hard copy invoices can be scanned and sent by email. So invoices in Poland uh, also being digitalized, but they are not yet in the XML format like other country. Uh, they usually take form of the PDF documents. And we don't have a system that is provided by the authorities. However, uh, at Return Partner, uh, we implemented an electronic document workflow named Airflow Invoices. And uh, we use the there an optical character recognition that you mentioned before uh, called OCR. And in the Airflow, the, this OCR can read the basis data from the invoices. Even through each uh, document looks different depending on the uh, invoice issuer. Uh, and the OCR shows us uh, the data that can read from invoices, uh, for example, invoice number, issue date, uh, currency amount. And what is interesting, we can teach uh, the system which invoice item corresponds, for example, the currency of the documents. Uh, so despite the fact that, that invoices in Poland look different, then they have non unique structure. OCR House uh, knows how to search all the necessary data and information. It sounds that, uh, that we adopted to the situation very well, that even if there is no central uh, central uh, software uh, that is being delivered from the authorities, we can anyhow with the technology with OCR uh, handle this uh, variety of invoices that uh, that occur uh, during the parties uh, during doing the business. Uh, okay, thank you very much for that explanation. Uh, and uh, I would like to greet now Ferdinand Schlappa, who is uh, located in Germany. Hi Ferdinand, how are you? Hi Patrick, I'm fine and thanks for choosing me for the session today. It was also a pleasure for us. Uh, so at the very beginning, I would like to also ask you to give us a short introduction of yourself. Justina, thank you very much that you did it on your own. Uh, so Ferdinand, what do you do in the Ritalin Partner? Yeah, I'm a digitization manager for the service line BPO and I'm responsible for all applications uh, which are used within BPO globally. So we have a lot of applications here and I'm responsible for the complete service line of business process outsourcing. Okay, so you are really the one that should digitalize or support the digitalization in Rhythm Partner. So I think that we picked the right person to be here with us. Uh, so going to the question, could you give us also uh, your view and to describe the situation uh, in Germany? How does it look in terms of the e-invoicing uh, regulations and also whether the uh, German authority delivers a certain uh, central um, software to issue invoices? Mm -hmm. What we heard before, it's not just for Germany, but uh, in, in respect to say, okay, uh, it's a German part. Um, as we said before, we're using it for uh, OCR and for the whole process of e-invoicing. And later we bring this e-invoices uh, via uh, interface to an API to the next uh, steps in another bookkeeping software. And as said, also we're using it here um, in form for a paper import from the mail. After this, we process them with the Rödel invoice, which comes with an OCR function, and we can read the main data out of it and uh, bring these files and information with this uh, so-called meta data into the other applications and read the and process like uh, amounts, item vendors, and dates, and something like this, for example. And uh, furthermore, all of this information can then be imported into our accounting systems via the interfaces, via the RPs, and we use here more and more standards to uh, 
uh, bring it to the process. Okay, you've mentioned about a tool, and this is the point that I would like to right now ask our uh, our panelists. Uh, and uh, could you give us a little bit more about the tool you've mentioned, Riddle Invoice? What does it really do in a little bit more detail? Mm -hmm. I think we will learn more about a, a, a lot of different tools, but uh, in BPO International, where I also located here in Nuremberg, we use it as a central tool for our, um, yeah, more than not just regional clients, a Rödel invoice. It's our Rödel branded tool for the invoicing process for clients. And with Rödel invoice, we drive the process of bookkeeping from scan, OCR, approval workflow to export the data into the following bookkeeping software, as mentioned before. So we have the whole process in, in one pre-tool and then we go to ERP systems or bookkeeping systems. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much for that explanation. So let's talk right now uh, more about the, the uh, about the tools. Uh, so let's go back to Imran uh, and uh, how does it look in UK and also in UAE in terms of um, in terms of um, tools that you are using? Yeah, um, in the UK and the UAE. So there's there's really kind of two ways that we can um, reassist clients. Um, number one is um, using the client's own ERP system. So uh, we get given, of course, um, dial-in details to the client system so we can work in their system. Or of course, the second second uh, uh, way of doing things uh, is where the client essentially um, relies on us, whereby we can use, as uh, my colleagues have all mentioned, um, Rodel invoice. So that's something which we also use. So there's this kind of connectedness between uh, various global offices for sure um, or um, you know we can use um, third-party external software a lot of cloud systems these days of course have, have become very popular um, things like uh, Zero, Sage and QuickBooks these kind of uh, multinational um, softwares um, and all these systems have uh, built into them um, OCR technology where they, um, so when you uh, scan in or, or you send uh, invoices to um, uh, like, for example, a cloud-based system, um, it picks out all the key details like the supplier name, for example, the type of, it even goes into uh, details such as the, the service that's being provided, the amount, um, registration numbers, et cetera, et cetera. And the OCR readers that are built into these softwares can, can pick this information out. Um, also, in terms of API links, um, a lot of the softwares uh, that we are using in, in UK and, as I say, UAE, because they're quite, they're quite aligned in terms of uh, the softwares we use to assist our clients, um, they have direct bank feeds. So when it comes to reconciling transactions, for example, for BPO purposes, in, um, in, in the bank, there's no need to manually book in these data anymore. Of course, um, there is an API link between the, uh, the bookkeeping software and the banking corporations, and all the transactions are automatically fed into the software. Um, the software then um, makes a, uh, a kind of intuitive uh, matching of a transaction. Ah, there's a payment and there's an invoice and I, I recommend or I'm suggesting that these two are the same. And at that point, um, of course, uh, the, the software won't automatically go in and book such transactions. It will wait for um, a, an approval to be, to, to be made. So, yeah, these are the kind of tools that we, we, we have and we, we work together on, on, on some uh, projects uh, or we work independently depending on who the client is. So does it mean that every decision is being done automatically by a machine, by a computer, or there is a certain personal attendance needed, you know, something like an additional check, whether everything has been correctly gathered from the document? Sure. Um, I, I don't think our clients are brave enough yet, and nor are we brave enough for let a computer to decide all of it at the moment. Um, so uh, there is always a final um, kind of approval process. Uh, that's done by a qualified bookkeeper uh, before the transaction is is booked into the system. 
Okay, thank you very much. Uh, I hear a security behind that, and I feel really comfortable if I if I were uh, the customer of Wooden Partner. So I would like to ask uh, also a similar question, and also a little bit more about the R flow that Justina has mentioned already. Uh, Justina, could you describe a little bit more what kind of tools do you use in Poland in terms of uh, of um, uh, digitalization and e-invoicing? Uh, at Rydon Partner in Poland, uh, as I mentioned earlier, uh, we implemented an electronic document workflow which called Airflow Invoices. And this is a tool for electronic processing of documents uh, such as purchase invoices. And Airflow Invoices is a secure, uh, secure electronic workflow dedicated to the company and the individual individuals, which means uh, that only designated person have access to it, user, the user, uh, username and password. And the data we receive uh, are stored in compliance with all security standards and GDPR requirements. Uh, E-invoices uh, that send the dedicated email address is associated with the document uh, workflow. And the uh, invoices uh, is improved by the supervisor, but what is important, uh, this step is dedicated to person authorizing the expenses and it's not obligatory. And we can set here a limit, uh, for example, 10,000 SWOT for all invoices and all invoices above this limit have to pass the approval step uh, why below the threshold I go directly to accounting approval uh, and this lets managers to verify and authorize only the costs that they are relevant from their point of view. Uh, I think the, the also the, uh, the important thing that the airflow system makes possible to break down the documents workflow within the company into, for example, branches, uh, and we can modify all step in each branch. For example, other, other limit can, uh, can be set on expenses or other person can authorize the expenses. And after the document is approved by supervision, uh, it is forward for bookkeepers who upload it accounting system uh, the Microsoft Dynamics IX. That sounds for me as a really sophisticated tool and also the one that delivers a certain uh, security due to the elements you've mentioned about the login into the system only by the um, authorized, authorized people and also it sounds for me like a tool that is supporting not to bother a person to you know, approve every single little expense that is not expanding at a, a certain threshold. That's that's yes, fantastic exactly. to hear that that we have uh, uh, something like this uh, these tools available. And I would like to now direct the same question to to Italy to Manuel. Manuel, how does it look from your perspective? Well, we in Italy have uh, two different kinds of solutions for our clients. Uh, first maybe we have in some cases we have access to the uh, software or the system ERP system used by the client in order to uh, uh, do the accounting directly on their so uh, software and even handle maybe the ingoing and outgoing electronic invoices which uh, have already been uh, uh, imported in their system or if we do uh, the accounting on our software or on our tool, uh, we use a third-party software called Datev, which is uh, uh, a software this is, that is also connected to the official channel uh, for the electronic invoices in Italy, the SDI channel, and from which and which allows us to import uh, out, automatically or let's say semi-automatically uh, all the invoices, uh, outgoing and ingoing invoices in the accounting system by as it uh, gives a proposal for the registration of each invoice in the accounting system and our uh, accountants then have to check the proposal eventually adapt it and then can definitely reg register the uh, uh, single invoice in the accounting system and the uh, datev the proposal provided by datev 
is uh, based on the uh, historical registrations made made on this counterpart uh, or the partner, the client or the supplier, and uh, uh, therefore takes out the information from the last registrations you made on this uh, party. And so it's a kind of learning process. Uh, by the more registrations you make, the more the system learns, and therefore the better it gets. But at the end, there is still a human behind it who check the correctness and gives the okay before the registration in the accounting system. Okay, the point. So it means technology supports human decision. That's for me right yes. now. It's a fantastic combination. Combination that really uh, expand the um, speed of, of our activities and also without losing the quality uh, and without uh, losing any important uh, data that is behind it. All right, so uh, let's go back now to uh, South America again. Uh, I would like to ask um, Thomas what he thinks, how he sees the uh, elements connected with tools that are being used in Brazil by a partner. Yeah, sure. Um, at Redland Partner Brazil, we work with two models. Either we do the accounting in our own system, which is called Sage, uh, or if the customer prefers, we also work directly in their ERP. It can be SAP or some local Brazilian ERP provider. And as I mentioned uh, in the first question, you then need an interface with the tax authorities to facilitate the issuance of the official invoice. Um, also, we are now working on an implementation of RPA, Robotic Process Automation, and the provider we chose for this project is uh, UiPath, which is basically the world market leader in RPA. Our goal is to automize all repetitive tasks within the fiscal department, so that includes obviously the invoicing, and I would like to mention that this is a pilot project also for Rödel worldwide. But Rödel is not the only multinational German firm which chooses Brazil as its pilot for implementing RPA in its administration. We know of many similar successful cases from our uh, customers which started in Brazil and now they are rolling out RPA group-wide. And that is, uh, from my perspective, simply due to the facts I mentioned before. Brazil is already very advanced in terms of digitization of tax obligation, and it is therefore a very favorable environment for RPA projects. And um, one of the large benefits of RPA is that the employees are then able to take over more sophisticated tasks, which then help them also in their personal growth. Uh, one particular task in Brazil is um, therefore to find right employees because education for accountants and um, tax analysts is fairly poor. Therefore, Rulian Partner Brazil is now also working together with the Chamber of Commerce, Brazil, uh, Germany, and the well-known university McKinsey from Sao Paulo. Um, we developed a new study, new dual study accounting 4.0, uh, which is based on the already very established uh, duale Hochschulstudium in Germany. And in this pilot project, uh, participating companies together with the University McKinsey will then mold the accounts of the future who are already up to date regarding the new technologies such as RPA or artificial intelligence and the new requirements of this uh, accounting profession, which is uh, undergoing very vast changes at the moment. So it means that digitalization is not only for our customers, it's not only for our real business that we are doing as Riddle Partner, but it is also for our employees that they can focus not only on a very repeatable, maybe boring activities, but they can focus on elements which require really a wide knowledge and experience which also they gain during such activities. Thank you very much, Thomas, for that. And I would like to ask you, um, how do you see what, apart from that, is the real uh, advantage? And also maybe you see the disadvantages of uh, implementation, uh, digitalization tool, uh, tools in, in Brazil. Well, from our perspective, one of the most important benefits of digitalization is certainly that there's a higher quality. And that is especially true in a very complex tax and labor environment such as Brazil. Um, all tax obligations and additional information such as prior year declaration, journal ledgers, labor declarations, 
declarations from counterparties such as suppliers and clients, they are reconciled automatically via software by the tax authorities. And if they find some differences, then tax assessments are automatically generating, and that includes principal, fines, and interests. And even if the company can later prove that it only made a mistake in filling out a declaration, this will then generate a significant internal cost such as workload and might even trigger fees for lawyers, for example. And by implementing automated solutions such as RPA, these risks can be significantly reduced. There is, however, one very important reminder regarding this issue. It is absolutely necessary to have stable processes before you start a digitization process. Because if you digitize inconsistent processes, then you will only multiply the chaos, and it would not. Uh, it would be better actually to not digitize at all. Also, for an efficient RPA, um, the process need to be coordinated between each other to allow the robots to really be able to work 24/7. Therefore, the implementation of an RPA project is always also a very good opportunity to review your internal processes and to adjust them accordingly. Yeah, that really sounds like a lean approach that uh, is also connected with my position in Riddle Partner, that first, before any programming, the, the process really has to be streamlined and really all the uh, waste activities, non-value added activities should be uh, eliminated from the process and then it can be, uh, it can be uh, automata, automatized. Uh, so, okay, so also the quality was the point you've mentioned, uh, and I would like to ask Imran right now, uh, what kind of advantages, maybe disadvantages, do you see in the UK and in the UAE uh, in, uh, as a result of digitalization? Yeah, no, thank you. Um, I think uh, Thomas uh, really explained uh, what the key, the key advantages, I think, disadvantages of digitalization are, to be honest with you. One point from 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 my experience in terms of, of course, the UK and the UAE, um, and again, I just keep saying that they're, they're both very closely aligned. So both both sectors uh, are kind of unregulated, especially in the kind of accountancy sector. They're very they're unregulated. So uh, pretty much anybody who's anybody can do bookkeeping and and um, you know um do bookings uh, invoices etc so um there's lots of players in the market uh, both in the uk and in the uae so uh they, it's a highly competitive area on price so um cost is what's driving a lot of firms to look into uh, as thomas mentioned rpa and automa automation um so yeah i think um the, the main the main point that or the main in my experience over the years um things have moved from a value or value add outlook of of um, advisor services for example and it's moved to one which is more cost conscious about things okay so i hear also the cost orientation is also uh, somehow embedded in all the processes that are uh, directed to di digitalize uh, activities okay thank you very much imran for that answer uh, and also i would like to ask uh, our uh, head of digitalization, how, uh, what is the main uh, advantage, disadvantage, uh, Ferdinand, from your perspective? Now I just talk for Germany, so cost and quality is also a point here, but in Germany a lot of them was driven by paper handling in the past. For Germany you have to know that we have a long history with paper as the single point of tr trust or uh, for signatures to sign it and give it to the next uh, guy here. So uh, a paperless workflow and the revision safe process and approval of incoming invoices and booking offices was from legal side not so easy to set up here in Germany. And for that, uh, that was one of the biggest tasks here. And we now also provide our clients with an invoice inbox where the clients, suppliers can send the invoices in form of paper directly to us as an accountant. And so we can process everything of, uh, for our client in one process, in one hand, and uh, have it totally in digital. So then we digitize it and use it for the rest of the paperless process. And in case we don't want to have expensive handling of paper in the future, Amy, so the big benefit is elimination of paper and of a faster process in total here. Great. It also sounds for me a little bit uh, ecological as we are getting rid of the paper that we are using and only make it digital. Uh, so 
that's absolutely also the point connected with digitalization. And Justyna, how do you see the advantages and disadvantages from Polish perspective? Maybe I start with disadvantages. And I think the most disadvantages about digitalization is that everyone have their own habit and they don't want to change things that they used to. And we are afraid of changes and technology. However, uh, digitalization of invoices brings great benefits. And apart from the benefits mentioned by my colleagues, I think that the main advantages is the electronic archive of invoices that can be accessed in the time. And it is a very easy and quick to find and to download and invoices, for example, for tax inspectors uh, and the, the electronic archive are also uh, one place for all invoice related information. Uh, because we can interact by airflow system and all ex uh, explanation is safe there. And such an electronic archive can also be used for controlling expenses by exporting a report of post invoices to XLS and compare an uh, example uh, of which branch had more costs uh, than other or than the previous year and the system i think can also act as a budgeting tool for example we can export a report of invoices that have not yet been posted and check the payment dates of invoices uh, to confirm the quash requirements on the account and we also cannot forget about transfer archive from cabinet to server so, in my opinion, digitalization brings positive changes. What I hear also from uh, that answer is that it is also connected with not diving into dust in some dirt, uh, dark place where the documents are being stored. For example, an auditor can easily, uh, sitting in front of a computer in a very comfortable, nice place, uh, check all the data, uh, he requires to, to do the job. So that's that's also uh, definitely an advantage. Uh, and uh, I would like to also direct that question to Italy. Manuel, how do you see the advantages and disadvantages uh, from perspective of Italy? Well, let's say that uh, we've already seen that with the implementation of the electronic invoicing, introduction of the electronic invoicing in Italy, there was a significant reduction of paperwork and uh, Therefore, we can say there's no more need of uh, dusty storage rooms, et cetera. And uh, as, you, as we now are able to uh, save all the bookkeeping relevant data and documents together as package and then share this package with whom we want or which, with, with the persons the client want. And in addition to that, um, uh, there's also another advantage from our side that we can say that with the uh, as I mentioned before, the import of the uh, invoice directly in the bookkeeping system, it is possible now to save uh, every uh, invoice together with its registration. And that uh, simplifies a lot the uh, exchange or the, uh, the discussions with our clients, which we have when we have checks on uh, single positions of trial balance, et cetera, as uh, we have uh, already the uh, document based on the registration itself directly saved on uh, the registration itself and that's uh, a great advantage and at, at also the, the sharing of the document uh, of the archive itself uh, is, is really one of the greatest advantages I see. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much. It also sounds for me accessibility so it is not necessary to physically be close to the document that we are looking but of course in a safe way grant access to someone who would like to see a certain document and check the data is required all right so we went through all the questions that we have already prepared for uh, for our webinar so right now is i think the most uh, uh, interesting part so the questions from our audience so let me check uh, what i can find on chat uh, in terms of uh, your questions i see one already written uh, and the question the question stands right now 
uh, how much confidence uh, do you have on reading or uh, interpretation of the system? How much depends on human intervention, uh, intervention uh, on this process? So I, I understand that this is the question connected with this automatization that we mentioned uh, during our webinar. So if I could uh, direct that question, Imran, to you, do you have such figure that you can reply on that? Yeah, um, it's a very good question. Yeah, thanks for the, thanks for the question. Um, with the systems that we use, um, the, the kind of uh, AI, should I say, whatever uh, technology that they're using now, AI or OCR reading, it picks up around about, um, there's about an 85 to 90% hit rate. So that's, that's how successful it can uh, pluck out the data from, from uh, a document. Um, so the level of human involvement, of course, it's still there. And, and from uh, a practice risk perspective, we would still require that to be there. However, um, you know, the, um, in terms of um, manpower, you know, we are probably, we ordinarily would have had a third more labor uh, employed here at, at the UK office, for example, and, or UAE. Um, if these kind of technologies were not being used so yeah we're picking up around about about 80 to 85 yeah 85 to 90 percent of, of of data that are automatically being read from from the systems that we use okay thank you for the figures i hope that they answer the question that was that was uh, maybe i uh, could add something because um, sure, Bernard, go ahead <laughs> because we we have this question very often and uh, it's a discussion have we 85 90 percent or what is the future of it because um, um a lot of fields because the quality of papers the quality of the invoices it's not handwritten anymore you have it nicely out of uh, erp systems and you get very good quality of invoices but uh, you have to to uh, enrich it with information what you have in the system because right now you don't know it is for account b account c uh, would you like to have it on this or that cost center and right now with a AI, what Imran said, it is more and more connected with each other. So we connect it with more databases to uh, uh, pre fill it with uh, which cost center was it in the last three times. Then maybe in the next three times it would be the same. But now we are uh, on track to 90, 95%. But we have to check did it really collect the right cost center uh, to put it in and to, to use it for our clients. But it is uh, better and better quality if you enrich it with more data around. Because uh, 10 years ago, 15 years ago, it was all the time a question of quality of the paper, what you feed in. Now, uh, a lot of data came in, not uh, as paper, or it came as paper, but in a very nice way. And it came in, in uh, as data invoice, as e-invoice. But you all the time have the decision on which uh, cost center or where you want to do it and how we would like to book it. And this you can enrich with new databases and with, uh, we call it big data, <laughs> um, where you can find uh, or have more findings uh, where you can enrich this. And that is uh, uh, the next step in, in booking, in automated booking also here. And also with RPA, you can uh, get more data from the surrounding or from the pre-process like uh, the colleagues in Brazil right now uh, are doing. And that's uh, the way where we go from this 85, 90% to more percent. Because in the end, the plan is somewhere in the future to have a blind booking, but for this, it must be 100% or 99.999% uh, right, and we are far from it. So it's it's yeah. just a dream. And just to add a little, tiny bit to that, uh, definitely, Ferdinand, so it's a very good point. Uh, what, one thing is, is a lot of these systems are, um, I think, what, what they're calling machine learning. So um, it's very progressive. So. Uh, initially, a, a new engagement will start start off with a hit rate of about 85, 90, without any so-called machine learning. But uh, right now, we have clients where the system is picking out about 98% of the of the of the data, uh, and and it's it's all virtually correct. It just needs a, a bit of human involvement. So it's a progressive um, it's a progressive thing where the machine uh, or the software is constantly learning after every single entry that's done. So yeah, it's a very good point, you know, what Ferdinand made. And uh, from an Italian perspective, I can say 
where we already have the electronic invoicing, the data taken out from the invoices are correctly 100%. So you have a 100% match. The thing, the thing we have to add or our input is where do we want to book, book it? So you can't say that it's an automatic process, but the, the data we get from the invoice are 100% correct because it is a simple data document you're reading in the accounting system. And therefore, uh, if the, the, the error is eventually on the invoice itself and not in reading out from, from the invoice in our system. But mm -hmm. the thing we have to add or our input is where do we want to book this single invoice in uh, if we want to book it on this cost center or on the other cost center or if we want to book it uh, on which uh, accounting position we have to choose it, yes. Sure, this is of course a process we get an invoice, we need to read it first, then we have to check whether the reading is correct. If it, if it is correct, then we have to put it on the appropriate cost centers or however we, we book it. Uh, and I see another question on chat, which is very uh, in line with that um, uh, ideology and with that uh, process thinking. Uh, and I would like to direct that question to, to Justyna. Uh, the question sounds, is it possible to connect invoice workflow system with the payments in bank? Thank you. Uh, this is a very interesting question. Um, let me start uh, by saying that our clients pay uh, for invoices which have already been approved and checked by accounting team and therefore are post in the accounting system. Uh, that is why we used our Microsoft Dynamics AX to define payments, and it lets us generate payments packages for various banks, and such packages uh, may be imported to, to banking system directly. However, uh, the Airflow system in which we process the comment can also create a payment workflow. Yeah, I would say that I can go further, that the process just closes with the bank, with the bank payment, and of course then with the reconciliation uh, at the end. Okay, so thank you very much for answering that question. I see also another one uh, that I think that we have still time to, uh, to deliver a response to that. Uh, the question I would like to direct to Thomas, uh, and the question uh, is as follows. Uh, are tools universal in terms of branch in which a customer do its business? Um, yeah, my answer would be somehow mixed, let's say, because you can, in principle, you can use a worldwide tool, but I think it's very important that you customize it uh, to the reality of the country, especially, for example, for, for Brazil, which is very specific, has a lot of different VATs. It is important um, that you have a local partner also that, that helps you to customize the solution because uh, we've seen many cases, for example, of SAP implementations uh, where the headquarters said, well, we did it in 15 countries, but it cannot be that complicated. And uh, if without a local partner, that it's, it's basically impossible to have a successful implementation, for example. Sure. Okay. Uh, so I think that we are going uh, to wrap up uh, today's webinar. Uh, so. As you have heard from our expert, uh, digitalization is a new way of doing business. Uh, what is needed to do it are equipment, tools, and also employees and uh, our customers' adaptation. So uh, we are very pleased that you were today with us and uh, we will respond, as uh, Justina said at the very beginning, we will respond individually to each of the question that has occurred on the chat and we haven't uh, enough time to respond to them. Uh, and uh, I really personally keep my fingers crossed for you and wish you a lot of success in your digital transformation. So thank you very much for your attention, take care, and I uh, pass the voice to Justina. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you to my colleagues and thank you to everyone who participated in today's live webinar. If you have any further questions, please contact the speakers. Their contact information is listed in the PDF document. Our next virtual international expert roundtable will be held on September.
For further information, please visit our website rödel.de. Once you exit today's event, you will receive a survey about today's live webinar. We would very much appreciate if you took the time to fill it out and give us your feedback. On behalf of Rödel and Partner and our presenters, thank you for being with us today and enjoy the rest of your day.